We're now going to take a deep dive into the use of water in the United States. For most environmental resources, we're used to talking about increasing demand and increasing scarcity and a future that looks increasingly dire. And for sure, those are issues with global water supply. But at the same time, there are some very interesting trends in the United States that run counter to our expectations for what is happening to water globally and are worth taking another look at. So we'll do that in the next few slides. In this video, we're going to look at how water use has changed from 1960 to the present in the U.S. and identify the economic sectors that are most responsible for these shifts. By the end of the video, you should have a good sense for how the U.S. uses water and also for how the different sectors have shifted in water use over the past decade or so. Lastly, we'll take a look at water use efficiency efforts and try to evaluate how those might be changing rates of use in some important settings. We're going to jump right to the punchline of this video, and that is that U.S. water use is actually going down at a national level. And when I say water use, I don't mean just per capita use. I mean actual total water use in the United States is declining and has been since around the year 2000. This is not something that we see very often in environmental science, especially in the face of rising populations. In 2015, the U.S. used 322 billion gallons of water each day. That's a lot of water, but it's actually down 9% from 2010, and it's lower than what the U.S. was using on a per day basis in 1970, when the population of the country was below 250 million people. Today we're getting close to 330 million people, and yet water use is going down. The figure here and many of the other figures in this video come from a 2015 U.S. Geological Survey report that compares current water use with historical rates. At the moment, this is the most up-to-date assessment that we have of national scale water use, and it has some very interesting patterns and trends. If you want to take a closer look at the report, the link is in the PowerPoint slides that are available in the education pages at www.colorado.edu forward slash silk, S-I-L-C. One of the first major things to notice about water use across the U.S. is that it's highly variable across the states. Some of this is due to population, but a lot has to do with what types of industry or economic activity occurs in each state, and also with climate, because some states receive more rainfall than others, and as a result, use water at different rates. The second thing to notice is the text on the right side. This breaks out national scale distributions of water use, and let's walk down this list. At the top, public supply includes water used by cities and the water used in homes, and this accounts for about 12% of national use. Actual in-home use is pretty small at 1%. Irrigation, mostly in agriculture, is 37%, with livestock production taking another 1%, and aquaculture, fish farms, using another 2%. So food production overall is about 40%. Industrial use is 5%, mining is 1%, and the big remaining category is thermoelectric power generation at 41%. The yellow and the white colors are there to remind you that some uses are consumptive, meaning the water is not returned in a usable form to the local area or watershed, versus non-consumptive, where the water is returned to surface water supplies. These distinctions aren't perfect, but they capture the broad patterns across these categories. There are three categories of use that account for about 90% of U.S. water use, and those are thermoelectric production, irrigation, and public supply. We're going to go through each one of these separately, but to start with, here are the main drivers of water use and how it has changed in the United States. Between 2010 and 2015, there was an 18% drop in the water used in thermoelectric production and a 7% drop in public supply use. There's about a 2% increase in irrigation water use. One thing that is very interesting is the pattern of how water is used from the west to the east in the country. This figure from the USGS report I mentioned earlier starts in the west on the left and moves state by state to the east on the right. In this display, you see a massive transition in water use from irrigation in the arid and semi-arid regions of the west to thermoelectric energy generation in the Midwest and a little bit to a lesser degree in the east. Those two categories of energy generation and irrigation drive much of the pattern in water use across the United States. Water is used in thermal electric energy generation to condense or cool steam that's used in the generator facility. When you see a coal or a nuclear power plant with large amounts of steam coming out the top, you're actually watching a consumptive use of water. Perhaps surprisingly is that this is the largest use of water in the United States, and also the largest contributor to the recent decline in water use. 
Two things are happening in the power sector that we should talk about. First, new plants are more water efficient than older facilities. Some of them use a design called closed loop that recirculates more of the water in the facility rather than just running it through one time and evaporating it into the atmosphere. But the other major change that is underway is a conversion from coal-fired power to natural gas and wind production of electricity. In the case of natural gas, the production mechanism uses a turbine that does not require water or steam. In contrast, coal-fired power plants, which regularly use steam as a key component of the generation process, um, use a lot of water. So part of the water use story in the United States is actually a change in the way that we're generating electricity in this country toward natural gas and more renewable sources. Irrigation looks at first glance like it hasn't changed much, but there are a number of shifts underway in agricultural production that are important to note. There's been about a 2% increase in water use in combination with about a 2% increase in irrigated land area between 2010 and 2015. That would seem like a wash, except that it's been a fairly drought prone period of time in the United States with increases in demand for both surface and groundwater supplies. And remember that most irrigation occurs in the western U.S., with California and Idaho using the largest amounts of water, followed by Nebraska, Colorado, Texas, Montana, Wyoming, and Oregon. The other important thing to note about irrigation is that about half of the irrigation water in the U.S. comes from groundwater sources. Many of those contain very old or fossil water, and many of which are being overdrawn relative to the natural supply of subsurface aquifers. So this is an issue that is continuing to be a problem for the United States. The municipal and domestic water use sectors are interesting because they also have gone down a fair bit over the last five years, with a total of a 7% reduction between 2010 and 2015, even as population has increased and as more people have moved to water-scarce regions like the U.S. Southwest. What's very interesting about these sectors is that about 61% of the water used comes from surface water, about 39% from groundwater. But we're not quite sure where all of these declines are coming from. Part of the decline is almost certainly coming from increased water use efficiency. The US EPA Water Sense program is a great example of this. It started in 20, 2006 and has steadily grown from first encouraging the use of water conserving toilets in 20, 2007 to include more and more appliances, faucets, and shower heads for use in, home use in the home. Efficiency has also been increasing in the use of more efficient irrigation controllers for landscapes and an increase in the amount of micro-irrigation or drip irrigation systems that are being used. Those systems reduce overall rates of water use. So this category is a case where efficiency efforts seem to be paying off in a pretty significant way at the national level. So overall, there's some good news on water use in the United States. It's not often that we see declines in overall use rates for any resource. However, there are concerns as we look toward the future. First, a large amount of U.S. food production occurs in places where there is limited surface and groundwater supply. This includes areas such as the Central California Valleys, Texas, and Nebraska. In fact, much of the arid and semi-arid western U.S. has very limited water supply and a lot of agriculture. And so it is likely that difficult decisions on agriculture will be coming in the next few decades. This is particularly true as we see persistent and potentially increasing drought as a result of climate variations and climate change. We've already seen signs of increasing conflict in water use between municipal and agricultural demands, especially in California, and we may see more of this as we look toward the future. To summarize, water use in the U.S. has been declining over the past two decades and is now at 1970 levels. A major cause of that decline in water use is a reduction in the amount of water used for thermal electric energy production and a reduction in public supply use rates. Agricultural use has been relatively flat over this time. Some of the things that are improving water use outside of energy are the use of low emission sprinklers for residential irrigation and for precision agriculture. In energy, it's the overall change in the U.S. energy system that seems to be driving this decline. As droughts continue and temperatures rise, we are still likely to see continued challenges to water use in agriculture across the western portion of the United States in the coming years, and this is something we'll have to keep watching.